A really powerful weapon can make any game extra fun. There's something incredibly satisfying about finding an item that allows you to breeze through hordes of enemies or take down a huge boss with just a couple of swings of your new and flashy toy. However, not every amazing weapon starts off incredibly strong. Some are pretty inconspicuous and seem like they're absolute trash, but if you invest in them, they can become really great. Weapons like this can offer far more enjoyment than an overpowered item you get right off the bat. Turning them into something useful or unique is a whole journey of its own, and it helps you get attached to your weapon of choice as you beat the whole game. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video game weapons with hidden potential everyone missed. Number 10, Shotgun, Resident Evil 4. The base shotgun you find at the beginning of Resident Evil 4 is a useful weapon early on, but it easily gets outclassed by most of the guns you get access to later in the game. It doesn't have the same stagger effect that the other shotguns get, and its poor range fails in comparison to the riot gun. Because of this, most players decide to replace the shotgun with a different model of gun as quickly as they can. If for some reason you do decide to keep the shotgun though, you might be shocked to learn that its final upgrade makes it supremely powerful. The game doesn't explain this well, stating that the upgrade, quote, significantly increases the destructive power of the weapon for long distance targets. In reality though, what the upgraded shotgun will do is that if any enemy gets hit by any of the stray bullets you shoot at them, they'll take damage as if they got hit by all the bullets. The perk makes the shotgun incredibly effective against groups of enemies at short and medium range, and pretty much negates its inability to stagger enemies at a long distance too, as even chip damage will instantly put them down. Number nine. Muramasa, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. At a first glance, the Muramasa sword does not seem like it's your best choice for Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It reduces your attack and defense quite a bit, and its special ability, which heals Alucard with the blood of his enemies, is shared with Gurthang, which has significantly better stats. On top of that, the weapon can jam and cause Alucard to miss entirely. However, Muramasa has a secret gimmick that can actually turn it into the most powerful weapon in the game. This sword scales every time Alucard uses its healing ability. Muramasa accumulates points with every use of this ability, and with enough points, it levels up its attack. Each new upgrade requires more points, and in order for Muramasa to reach its peak potential of plus 999 attack, you have to trigger its ability a whopping 1 million times. Number 8. Frying Pan Fable. On the surface, the frying pan from Fable doesn't look like much. It has a low damage output, and it's a pan with a creepy face etched on the bottom. Actually, it doesn't even look like it'd be good for cooking, if we're honest, but in the hands of a competent spellcaster, it's actually a powerful tool for destruction. The pan can be obtained via a treasure hunting quest after finding six treasure clues that will lead the player to it. Those who find the pan may be disappointed by its low damage output, but the pan actually has a few tricks up its um, handle. The pan has four augment slots, which is pretty significant on its own. The number can go up to five as the player can use an additional unseen slot by putting five augments in the pan at the same time without exiting the menu. This actually means the pan has more slots than any other weapon in the game. You can use them as you like, but by filling them with mana augmentations, you can turn yourself into a powerhouse of a mage that's never going to have to pause while casting spells. Number seven, Paddle Ball. Fallout 4. The Nuka World DLC introduced plenty of wacky weapon choices to Fallout 4, and of course, the Paddle Ball. Now on their own, of course, these toy weapons don't really do any significant damage, and they're mostly just used as a reminder that the raider-infested Nuka World used to be a theme park for kids. However, after visiting Nuka World's bottling plant and delving deep into its secret lab, the player is able to obtain the schematics for a military project that sought to weaponize the signature Nuka Cola. The schematics allowed the player to upgrade the Thirst Sapper to shoot nuclear projectiles, but also, unbeknownst to most players, unlocked new upgrades for the paddle ball. The schematics description doesn't mention this, but they also include a recipe for a new paddle ball dipped in the nuclear cola. The strongest version of this paddle ball was capable of taking down a Myalurk razor claw in just a couple of hits, making it more than just a rare collectible for your settlement. Number 6. The Model Gun Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII The Final Fantasy series is no stranger to the concept of joke weapons. Final Fantasy VII had a whole set of joke weapons made 
made for all the main characters of the game. However, it was Dirge of Cerberus, the series' take on shooter games, that took that concept to a whole new level by allowing the player to turn one of its joke toy guns into an Ultima weapon. The model gun is, as the name implies, literally just a model of a gun, and its damage output of one really gets that point across. That said, just like any other gun in the game, the model gun can also be modified, and although the gun doesn't really get all that much better with the first two upgrades, the final upgrade of the gun is well worth its mind-boggling price. By spending 200,000 gil on the model gun's final upgrade, the player can transform it into an Ultima weapon. The price tag on the weapon is going to require you to spend hours grinding and searching for gold bars, but the stats on this thing are totally worth the trouble. Number 5. M1911 – Call of Duty Zombies The debates regarding the best weapons in Call of Duty Zombies can get very heated, and with such a wide arsenal at the player's disposal, some rifles can really feel underrated or underutilized by the rest of the community. One weapon in particular, the M1911, you start with in the Zombies mode in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. It's definitely underrated, but only because most players haven't stuck with it long enough to discover its true destructive potential. Being a starter weapon, it doesn't do a lot of damage, and most players will just discard it as soon as a better option presents itself. However, those who keep the M1911 long enough to bring it to a Pack-a-Punch, the machine in the game that can upgrade any weapon, will be rewarded with one of the most powerful upgrades in the game. After receiving the Pack-a-Punch treatment, the M1911 turns into two guns called Mustang and Sally that shoot explosive bullets. That's right, this little pistol can be turned into two compact grenade launchers that have deadly aim and a massive impact radius. And to think, most people will just throw it away for the first shotgun in sight. Number four. Or the Wrench, Bioshock. Although Bioshock offers the player a wide range of guns to choose from, the same cannot be said about melee weapons. The only choice the player has is the wrench they find at the start of the game, and at first glance, its low damage and limited range aren't anything to write home about. However, with the right tonics and plasmids, the wrench can actually become one of the best and most fun weapons in the game. To start off, you can use a few tonics to significantly boost the wrench's damage and speed. This will turn it into a considerable damage dealer, but this isn't even where the Real fun begins. When an enemy is unaware or hit with an electro bolt, the damage the wrench does to them is quadrupled. Combine this with tonics that allow you to stun enemies and move more quietly when wielding the wrench, and all of a sudden you can sneak up on most enemies in the game and one-shot them like it was nothing. The wrench build is not only stupidly powerful, but it also makes for a fun alternative to the gun-toting way you generally go through a Bioshock game. Number 3. Dawnguard Runax – Skyrim Although most weapons in Skyrim can be infinitely upgraded via the enchanting and alchemy exploit, there aren't many that can scale on their own. One example of such a weapon would be the Daedric Ebony Sword, which gets more powerful with each companion and friendly person you kill. Let's be honest though, who in their right mind wants to kill off all your friendly NPCs in Skyrim? I mean, they're the ones carrying all your loot. Perhaps a better alternative would be the undead hordes plaguing Skyrim's landscape, and this is where the Dawnguard Runax comes in handy. The weapon can be obtained in one of the side missions for the Dawnguard faction, and its enchantment allows it to scale its magical damage with each undead creature you kill. The count of the undead slain can go beyond 100, but the catch is it resets with every dawn. Well, except there is a way to keep the scaling permanent. After killing enough undead, you can upgrade the axe at a grind stone and lock the weapon's undead count. Now you can enjoy all the damage you've accumulated regardless of the time of day. Number 2. Wooden Sword – Ninja Gaiden The Wooden Sword from Ninja Gaiden for the Xbox 360 was the most time-consuming and expensive weapon to upgrade. Was the case because the weapon was strong and each upgrade made it even more powerful? No, of course not! It's a wooden training sword. However, this useless little item could be transformed into something truly powerful, if not somewhat ridiculous looking. After purchasing the sword from Muramasa and upgrading it seven times, the wooden sword was changed into a giant ore adorned with glowing red symbols called Unlabored Flawlessness. The weapon's stats were significantly better than the sword it was made from, and it came stacked with a bunch of useful and unique abilities. It could deal twice as much damage when the player was low on health, and perform special attacks such as aerial strikes and the powerful Izuna drop, despite being classed as a heavy weapon. The only downside to Unlabored Flawlessness was that it was really slow. But then again, after making quick but pointless jabs with your wooden sword for so long, a wide and heavy swing of your instant death all was pretty satisfying. Number 1. Sword Hilt – Dark Souls 
From Software games are full of weapons that all have unique mechanics and attributes that make all of them feel special. However, some weapons may seem weaker than others, and in the case of the straight sword hilt, a literal hilt of a broken weapon, the item is just completely useless. That is, until you learn how to forge it into one of the most powerful swords in the game. In the original Dark Souls, instead of buying the weapons of defeated bosses with their souls like you do in other games, you first had to upgrade a weapon 10 times, and then infuse it with the soul to ascend it to its new form. In the case of Sif's soul, the fan favorite good boy, the infusion would result in the creation of the cursed greatsword of Artorias, a powerful weapon but not at its full potential. Only two weapons allow the infusion to transform the soul into the proper, non-cursed variant of Artorias' sword, the straight sword hilt and the broken straight sword. And yes, that basically means the trash you picked up super early in the game is actually the key to getting the most powerful blade in Dark Souls. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other hidden powerful weapons that most people completely missed out on. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.